things matter. Tell your neighbor, small things matter. Small things matter. All right, let's look at the kingdom in Luke 17, 20 through 21. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see, it's here, see, it's there, for the kingdom is within you. The kingdom is in you. That's my favorite thing about Resurrection Sunday or Easter. It's not the eggs. It's not the food. We it's... played the Easter linebacker video earlier. Oh, really? That's awesome. He was so mad because it's not about the Easter bunny. Yeah, it's not about that. It's about resurrection power, but not just that Jesus rose from the dead and that we have eternal security, but that we have an opportunity for a great life here. How many of you would say, you know what? I think my life could get better in a couple of ways. Like there's a couple things going on. I know my life could get better. It's not the best that it could, all of us are like that. There's not one person that shouldn't have their hand up. Like, yeah, there's more. That's really one of the foundations of our church is John 10, 10. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came what? What kind wow. of life? More abundantly. more abundantly. Yes, eternal too, but more abundantly. Jesus came so that we could have more, so that we could have the very best. You know, the world tells you, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to look a certain way, you got to have so many followers, you got to have, you got to be so good at basketball, you got to, you got to get a scholarship, all these rules about being a success in the world. But Jesus just says, hey, listen, if you'll come to me, if you'll learn about me, I will make you a success. That's what God put inside of you the moment that you got saved. And if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you're going to get a chance to do that at the end of service. Pastor Greg's going to lead you in a prayer to do that. But let's get through here. We talked on Wednesday night, uh, fill it in. The kingdom is in you and you give expression to it through the church. You not only have a place in heaven, but you have a place here and now. And if you're here as a guest to Choose Life Church, you don't come regularly. Wednesday night is our midweek uh, big youth service where we have sixth through 12th graders. We have uh, praise and worship. Just that's when these actual messages happen. I encourage you to come on Wednesday night. It's a lot of fun. Um, but, but Wednesday, we looked at the parable of the growing seed, which is the kingdom is like a seed thrown in a field by a man. When he goes to bed, he forgets about it. The se seed sprouts and grows and he has no idea how it happens. The earth does it all without his help. First, a green stem of grass, then a bud, then the ripened grain, when the grain is fully formed, he reaps harvest time. How can we picture God's kingdom? What kind of story can we use? It's like an acorn. When it lands on the ground, it's quite small as the seeds go. Yet once it's planted, it grows into a huge or oak tree with thick branches. When you leave today, uh, we're going to give you a flash card, a kingdom flash card. It looks like this, but it has a mustard seed on it. That's what the King James says. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. You guys can't even see that from here. It is so tiny, but let's throw that picture of the tree on the screen. Look how big of a tree is in this tiny little seed. You know what we can learn from this? Small things matter. Now, this is what we're gonna do. We have a little challenge for you. How many of you guys like to win stuff? Okay, you have the opportunity at the end of service today, or you can just grab the stuff and head out and do it on your own. There's a pot back there. Have they already done that? Okay, there's a pot back there. I just wanna make sure y'all would have them with you. We're busy eating cookies. Oh, perfect. That's games. better than what I'm about to say. But if you do this, there's an opportunity to win. How many of you guys like to win? Okay, so you plant a seed. We give you the seed packets, you take a pot. Like you don't have zero investment. All your investment is water, okay? You're gonna email us pictures, okay? Send them to our info. It's info at chooselifeyouth.com. Is that right? Info youth. Info youth, write it on your paper. Info youth at chooselifehobs.com. You're gonna, now don't send us your picture if nothing's growing yet. Do you know what I'm saying? You'd be blowing up our email unless you just want a victory celebration that you planted dirt. it. If you want to... Yeah, you could do that. That'd be yeah, fun. Yeah, let me, let me have you do that. Sorry, I'm, I really know what I'm doing. Um, if you are wanting to participate, then go ahead and send us a picture, you and your pot. And what we're going to do, everybody that gets something... Y'all, you don't know how many times I planted something and I did not faithfully water She's it so and nothing ever happened. Stuff. She's okay? Very good so at I want to challenge you guys to plant something and stick with the watering process. And it's going to be amazing. I don't know what it's like because I've never done it. But I'm hoping, my faith is in you guys, that... Have any of you ever successfully planted something? 
Oh, yeah. I kind of okay. had a feeling. So everybody that does this gets a prize. Boom. Okay? It's not the first one. So you're not like singing over your seat. Come grow faster. Come grow faster. No, no weird stuff. No special fertilizer. I mean, if you do that, if you want. But it's for everybody that gets something to come out of that dirt besides this seed. Okay? It's like your spring it's your spring challenge, okay? So you'll email us, infoyouth at choosefobs.com. Go ahead and let us know if you're participating. If you don't want to, take it, give it to your mom or your grandma or aunt or cousin, somebody that likes to do it just as a free gift. Like, hey, they gave me this at church today, um, and I want you to grow something because I don't want to grow something, right? Some of you guys may not want to. Okay, here we go. Facts. Genesis 8:22. as long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. Your words are seeds. Are they growing good things or bad things? Are you encouraging or are you discouraging? Are you sweet and kind or not? Words are seeds. Number two, your blank there is actions are seeds. You know, sometimes we're so mad that we got in trouble, but it's like what you did is the reason why you got in trouble. That, that's not, the Bible says that the, when you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. So Pastor Kathy would always say like this, like obedience brings blessing not disobedience. If you disobey, you can't expect to get blessed and then be mad because there was a consequence because you reap what you sow. You never plant an apple seed and get a potato vine. Let me ask you this. Have any of you ever gotten in trouble and you were like mad that you got in trouble, but deep down inside you knew that it was your fault? You knew it was because of some, right? In the moment, we don't want to admit it, but there was a seed behind that repercussion. Just like the Bible says the wages of sin is death, right? So sin pays a wage. Sin actually pays you, but unfortunately what it pays you is death. Yeah. So seeds are so important. So thoughts are also seeds. What you think about, you can write this verse down. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So your thoughts are seed. You want to think the good, the right things about you and the right things about others. Now, we had a lot of Easter fun today, so we're probably not going to have time to hit every single point in detail, but I want to make sure that you have your guide filled in. Then you can go back after the service or sometime this week and re-listen to the message, either on our Choose Life YouTube channel or on our app. And if you don't have our Choose Life YouTube channel, we want you to get it and subscribe and so Choose you'll know... Life. Life when we're youth. yes search choose it. life youth Subscribe. search it and that's where we'll be so how you sow or let me give you this last one the word is seed this seems like a really insignificant thing maybe sometimes well, I'm just going to church no you're not just coming to church you're planting the word in your heart and when you do it's going to change you so the word of God is seed now I want you to answer how many of you would be like you know what I think I should know more about God's word raise your hand if you're like I think I I want to know more about God's word. Let me tell you something really fun that's happening this summer. Y'all already saw a video for hey. it. Summer internship is summer a great internship. way to learn more Let's about go. God's word every single day for a whole month. And then after that, we're going to go on a week long trip and we're going to have a lot of fun together. So get your parents to sign you up for summer internship. If you have an issue financially, let us know. Uh, we want to help you make sure that you can get here. That's how you're going to learn more about God's word this summer. Okay. Next blank, how you sow is how you're going to reap. So if you only spend a little bit of time with God's word, you'll only know a little bit. But if you grow and you decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a priority, right? What you sow is also what you'll reap. If you're kind to others, you reap kindness. If you're a jerk to others, you're going to reap that. If you're not friendly, how many of you guys have ever been around non-friendly people? It's awkward, huh? When you walk into a room, you see somebody and you try to engage them in conversation and they don't say anything, that's kind of awkward. Now, if it, it's different. It, oh, shy God. and, and um, unfriendly are two different things. Sometimes you're in a new room, you're in a new space, you don't know everybody. I totally get that. But sometimes it's not that at all. You're just... Aloof. Yeah, you're like, or, eh, whatever. Eh. Don't want to be like that. So, uncovering the veil on hype. Hype is how we misinterpret what's really important. Hype is how we misinterpret what's really, really important. The kingdom doesn't look like flashy and showy all the time like things in the kingdom do, the things in the kingdom of darkness do. The enemy does, he blows everything up and makes it look so great. And in the end, it's really only just hot air. 
right? So we want to realize the first example we looked at was the understated ask. You know, when Jesus asked his followers to follow him, he didn't roll out the red carpet and say, hey, I'm going to make you famous. Peter, if you come follow me, people are going to be talking about you for thousands of years. Your name is going to be so famous. He didn't say any of that. He just said, hey, Peter, follow me. And Peter dropped everything. So if you're not aware, guys, you could miss it. Right. All right. I'm going to continue. And then I'm going to give you guys a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life in a minute. Pastor Greg's going to go to the main service. We love you, Pastor Greg. We're, I love you guys. Our fate's on your shoes. That, that will not stain. All right. How you get something is how you have to keep something. Guys, that's why you want to be sincere. You don't want to be fake. Have you guys ever gotten some friends before because you acted like you liked something and then you really didn't like it? You know what I mean? You acted like, oh, that's so cool. I, I want to be in your group. And it's like, everyone's doing bad things. Oh no, shoot. I sh you know what I mean? Like, we don't want to be like, just be who you are. And if people make fun of you or if people reject you for it, let them go because you're perfect the way that God made you to be. And there will be people that come across your path. You know, for me, I made the best friendships of my life when I was in college. Now that doesn't mean that I never had anybody to chill with when I was your age and in high school, but like, don't, I would rather have my testimony than so many of my friends' testimony who made their relationships. So I'm so grateful that I didn't meet my spouse as a 14 year old. Cause the guy I was crushing on back then, no, block, 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 block. You know, things change. You change. I'm so glad that I didn't give my heart away. I didn't give my life away. I guarded my carnal treasure, which is my virginity until a later season. Do that same thing. Yeah, people are going to, people who are miserable and are following the crowd don't want to be intimidated by you not following the crowd. So they're going to try to make fun of you. I'm like, let them hate, make fun of me, that's fine. But I went to that 10 year reunion and I'm telling you the most beautiful girl in my class was in the bathroom hugging a toilet. <laughs> Literally, it was like no time had passed. Did she show up with the husband? No. She came to the party already drunk and was in the bathroom. I went in the bathroom just like normal, right? And she's hugging the toilet. It's early in the evening and she's already drunk. Nothing changed. You partied back then, you're partying now, and you're not married. You're not happily married. You don't have a happy ending right now, right? So don't buy into the enemy's hype. That's, I say all that to say. Number two, applause not needed. You know, Jesus did incredible miracles and he didn't say, hey, did you see that? Did you see that guys? Did you see how that lady got healed? Did you see that I raised Jairus' daughter from the dead? Don't be like that. Don't need applause from people. Okay, now if your love language is words of affirmation, you really gotta work on that because my love language is words of affirmation. So I have to keep that in check. And you know how I keep it in check? When I want somebody to validate me, I validate others. So this morning, I'm gonna send somebody else a happy resurrection, you're an incredible person text, right? If you want that, then I know I gotta sow that. I can't just wait around and expect everybody to be like, Pastor Charity is so legit. Cause really it's not even us anyway. It's the greater one in us. Number three, the instantaneous miracle and the quiet resuscitation. If you, guys, if you get these words spelled right on your paper and you walk out of here and show your parents, look at these two words, y'all, gold star. I couldn't even spell resuscitation. I had to look it up to make sure that just means bringing someone back to life. Those are big words for somebody your age. I feel so happy for you guys that your vocabulary just got bigger. Instantaneous, no one says that and resuscitation, right? What happened? The woman with the issue of blood had been sick for 18 years. That's longer than y'all have been alive. Can you imagine being sick your whole life? You wake up, you can't get out of bed, you can't play, you can't run, you can't jump, you can't go shopping. I'm looking at the girls, they're like, we're not jumping, we're not running. Okay, y'all be going to the mall or whatever. Imagine if you couldn't do any of that right? What, what would you do? This woman was sick for 18 years and she touched Jesus and he healed her in an instant, right? Something that seemed so small. He just, she just grabbed his robe and she was immediately healed. And then he raised Jairus's daughter from the dead and said, don't tell anybody. Now that's going to be kind of hard because everyone's going to realize, okay, she was dead and now she's alive. But what was the point he was making? This is not about me. This is about the greater one in me. Guys, anything good that you can do, whether it's singing, dancing, preaching, helping other people, you can't do anything without God. 
So stop acting prideful and cultivate an attitude of humility, okay? There's a difference between communication and manipulation. And I'm just gonna give you these notes. If you want the details about this, jump back on the app because I wanna give you a chance today if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life to make that decision. So we'll fly through these pretty quickly and you'll have to get the why behind these cool statements um, on the app. So there's a difference between communication and manipulation. Manipulation is insincere, it's selfish, and it's rooted in fear. You know, have you ever been talked into doing something that was made to be so cool and then you get there and it's like, it's not cool? No, now sometimes things take time. You know, it takes time to build, it takes time to grow and you might be a pioneer. But when somebody blows it up like it's something, we all know what's in a balloon, air. As easy and fast as it blew up, it can be deflated. So don't buy into hype. When we talked about it's not that big of a deal, we talked about underrating the significance and impact of small things. But they can basically end up being game changers. Remember we looked at Nemo if you were here on Wednesday night, and if not, just rewatch the message. And if you have a question about finding the app or finding our, um, our YouTube channel, just ask one of the leaders in here before you leave. Show them your phone, or they'll grab your phone and help you out with that if you have a phone. Um, so what's the deal? We underrate, Nemo throws an attitude and just with one little look of his little fishy face, you knew he's gonna go touch the butt, which is the boat. Right, he's gone and the whole movie changed. Now for the rest of the movie, we're trying to get that little guy back to his dad. And it's like horrible. I cannot stand movies when people get separated from their parents. Is anybody like me? That's like a firstborn trauma. That's firstborn trauma. Like honestly, like if you want to literally like scar a firstborn, let them get separated from their parents because they don't know what to do. Like they're just like, I don't know what to do. Um, if you're guys, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe you're like, I'm fine without my parents. <laughs> no, okay. So we wanna ask ourselves, what am I sowing? Remember we talked about winking, you know? Sometimes that just might be how you're brought up. Like that's how I say what's up. But it can, it, according to scripture, it's the heart behind all this stuff. But I'm telling you, the guys that used to wink at me, they're not in my life anymore. They were shady. That would like give me the nod, you know? And I'm not talking about before I'm married. I'm talking about in church. I'm talking about church life. Men come up in here, think you're cute. You're married. They're married. And they're like, nodding, what's up, girl? Winking at you. You look pretty today. What, what's your problem? Go compliment your wife. Go you lose your eyesight winking at your wife, not me. Okay, I don't need your winks, bro. I already got a man, and he thinks I'm awesome. You know what I'm saying? Don't, guys, don't be like that. And then, like, in your swag, you're all weird. It's weird. No guy likes that. Like, when you try hard, everyone knows. Okay, and when you're trying hard to impress a seventh grader, you need to get a life because we're all gonna grow up, you know what I'm saying? And you wanna honor, you wanna honor each other. Treat each other like brothers and sisters because once you've opened that door, you know, I had guy friends, even though I didn't respond, once they opened the door and said, I want more, we could never go back to just being friends. I tried, but every time that, that, I, I did anything, it, it was like flaming a fire of hope inside of them. Even after they knew Greg, even after they met Greg, Greg moved here. They still thought in their mind, you had all these crushers, just kidding. It sounded like that, like they all thought, like there were dozens of guys throwing themselves at me. No, it was not like that at all. Okay, it's so weird that I even said that. Okay, what was I saying? Um, anyway, they still, like you're giving them hope, guys. Girls, don't give the guys false hope. What is my relationship with hype? You know, if a new shoe comes out and you have to be the first ones that get it, just slow your roll. Just don't put pressure on your parents. Do you know what I mean? Like if they're that cool, they will stand the test of time. But if not, sometimes we've rushed in and then by the time we get it, it's not even cool anymore. And that costs money that we could have allocated. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, well, I don't be the only one that doesn't have it. Just be the only one that doesn't have it. You know, when Facebook and all that stuff came out, I just slowed my roll on all that. I didn't like the sounds of it. And I ended up never getting it. Like, I don't need that in my life. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't be the kind of person that's like, oh, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna, that's fear. That's the enemy, okay? Number three, do I underrate things that don't need to be underrated? 
It's not that big of a deal, mom. It's just one test. Everyone's cheating. Everyone's lying. That's a big deal. If you have to convince somebody that it's not a big deal, you just establish that it's a big deal. Right? Remember I said on Wednesday night, sometimes I tell my mom that just because, especially like if she hears something about teenagers, she doesn't understand that you guys have puberty and an emotional roller coaster and a lot of different things going on. And so I'll tell her it's not a big deal. Like they're going to be fine. I need to probably stop saying it's not a big deal because it is a big deal. If you're yielding to rebellion, if you're not doing what you need to do, but I'm saying they're going to be okay. <laughs> I'm trying to focus on that they're going to be okay because I want to put faith over the situation and I don't want her to think worse of you. But the reality is if you're not doing right, that's a seed that you're sowing that's going to produce a harvest, right? So we want to do right. Now